Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be going through a few of the different ways that we can set up our scanners to find some cash secured puts to sell. Now, before we get into it, it is important to remember that there are a ton of different ways that we could set this up. We could set up a simple scan just to look for more volatile underlyings towards their upper end range of volatility that also happen to have weekly options. We could scan for fundamentals that we find important like PE ratio, cash flow ratio, dividend yield, pretty much anything. We could also create scans that look for individual options contracts rather than the stock that meet our criteria. So rather than Apple, the stock showing up as a scan result, the scan is going to show us the Apple 130 calls 30 days out as a scan result. Now I'm really just saying all of this to preface the fact that you can set up this however you want. You don't necessarily have to copy exactly what I've done to scan for options. And once I'm done going through my specific scan, the one that I've set up, I'm going to go through a few ways that you can maybe tweak my scan and add some things that you might find more important. Now jumping right into it, you can't see my scan right here on the screen. Now in order for you guys to see how I actually created this thing, we're going to go ahead and reset it and start from the beginning. So to do that, we're going to come up here to the three little lines in the top right and go ahead and hit reset. Now this is the exact screen you guys are going to see when you come to the scan tab and specifically the option hacker. It's going to be a blank screen like this with no filters pre-made up here at the top. Now, like I said before, you can scan for practically anything you want, but we're going to jump into my scan and how I set it up. So to start off with, the very first thing I want to do is make sure we're only going to be scanning through those stocks that actually have weekly options. Now, the reason I'm doing this is to find those more liquid underlyings. Those stocks that have weekly options tend to have more actively traded options as well. So I probably don't have to worry about liquidity anytime I go to put a trade on a weekly option or at least a stock with weekly options. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up here to where it says scan in and currently says all optionable. We're going to go ahead and click on that and we're going to look down at public R through W. From there, you're going to see a little side menu pop up and we're going to go to the very bottom and go ahead and click on weeklies. Now that was the very first filter we're going to add. The next one we're going to add is actually based off the bid price of the option that we're going to be looking for. Now in this case, we're just going to use one of these defaults here. Currently it says option delta. We'll go ahead and click on that and we're going to scroll up to find bid and click on it. Now you can put whatever you'd like here or you don't have to put anything here at all, but I'm going to go ahead and put in a minimum of 0.25. So the contract has to have a bid of at least 25 cents for it to show up in my search results. The next thing I'm going to add is actually day sell expiration. So we'll go ahead and leave this here. And I want to look at options that are not expiring for at least 20 days up until let's say 60 days here. Go ahead and throw that in there. Now, since the scan we're making is specifically for short puts or naked puts, cash secured puts, whatever you're, whatever you're doing on the put side, we're going to add a filter for Delta and we're going to add an option filter. We're going to come over here to where it says covered return and find Delta. Now, in my case, I typically sell options that have a Delta of roughly 30. So roughly speaking, it has a probability of expiring worthless about 70% of the time. Now I'm going to give myself a little bit of wiggle room in this case. So I'm going to make the minimum negative 0.35. And I'm going to make the maximum negative 10 cents. So what this is showing me is I'm going to have options show up in the results that are between a 10 delta and 35 delta at the absolute extremes. Now, the next one I'm going to add is return on risk. And this is actually another option filter. We'll come down to day cell expiration, scroll down until we see return on risk. Now, the return on risk or ROR is going to be max profit divided by max loss. Basically, the kind of return I'm trying to aim for based on the risk I'm willing to take. The higher the return, the greater the risk. The lower the return, the lower the risk. So if I try to get too high of a return, maybe I'm taking on too much risk of, of assignment in this case. If I get too little return, maybe I'm not getting enough uh, premium up front for the risk that I'm actually willing to take. So in this case, just to put something in here, I'm actually going to put a minimum of 5% in this case. And we can always tweak this later. We could maybe tweak it higher or lower if needed, um, depending on how many results we get pop up. But the next thing I'm going to add is a filter to scan for volume. And really, this is just to ensure that the option is actually liquid. I might not get some results pop up that normally would and maybe are liquid just because they haven't traded yet today or they didn't have any volume um, at the time of the scan. But I'm willing to give that up in order to avoid those really illiquid options that don't trade at all and have some crazy wide bid ask spreads. I don't want to waste my time looking at them. So what we're going to do here is change this from delta to volume in this case. And I'm going to put a really small number here. I'm just going to put 100 contracts. Now, some people would stop here and this would be perfectly good for their... A cash secured put scan or a naked put scan. But for me, I like to add another component to it, which is volatility. So what I'm going to do is come up here to add a filter. And this time it's going to be a study filter. We're going to come down here to ADX crossover, come down to custom. From there, you're going to have to create this one yourself. And we're going to have to first delete whatever is currently in here, which in this case is ADX crossover. 
Once you delete that out of there, you're just gonna come down to add a condition. From here, we're gonna select a condition. It's gonna be a study condition. We're gonna type up here where it says, look up a study. We're gonna type in IMP for implied volatility. We'll find in the list there, it's the second one from the top. And what we're looking for in this case is implied volatility greater than 40%, let's say. So we're gonna say is greater than, we're gonna select a condition. This one's gonna be a value condition. And because we said 40%, we're gonna put 0 0.40 right here. Next, we'll go ahead and hit save, and we'll go ahead and hit okay. So all we did just now is first off, set up all our pre-made filters because we're looking for options that trade at greater than 25 cents or at least 20 days to 60 days out until expiration. They've got a delta between uh, 10 and 35. They've got a return on risk of greater than 5%. They trade at least 100 contracts per day or at least up to when I'm running the scan. And the implied volatility on the underlying is greater than 40%. And I'm actually gonna add one last filter to this. So what we're gonna do is come up here to add a filter once again. It's gonna be another study filter. And this time we're gonna be scanning for IV rank. We're not just looking for underlyings with high volatility. We're looking for companies with high volatility relative to where they normally sit. And IV rank kind of acts as like a gauge. Is volatility high or low for this particular company right now? And as option sellers, I'm sure most of you know, we're trying to sell when volatility is typically at that higher end range, so we can take advantage of that volatility contraction, volatility falling back down to its median level. So in our case, we're gonna go ahead and click on ADX cross over here, which is just the study that auto fills. And this time we're gonna come down to volatility and we're gonna click on IV percentile, which in this platform is mislabeled IV percentile is IV rank. And all we're gonna do is scan for, let's just say greater than 20 and all the way up to 100. Now 100 just means volatility is the highest it's been in the past year. Now that doesn't mean volatility couldn't continue to expand from where it's at, even if it's at its yearly high, but we're saying it's more likely to fall from here than it is to expand any further. Now this is pretty much it. This is the scan I run on pretty much a daily basis. We're gonna come over here and hit the scan button and see what kind of results we get. Now you're gonna notice that all I see are the actual options themselves. I've got BBIG, you can see CGC, Clover, Fubo, but for me personally, I also like to see the underlying equities attached from themselves. It gives it a little bit more organization to it. So what we're gonna do is come over here to where it says uh, options at the moment. We're gonna switch that over to stock and options, and we'll go ahead and hit scan once again. From there, you can see it organizes it a little bit better. You've got BBIG and then all of the options that uh, show up as results for my scan right below it, then CGC and its options, Clove and its options, etc. Now, I also like to add both the stock and options uh, filter right here because I've also got column headers here that are specifically for the stock rather than the options. If you see on the far right hand side here, vol index and IV percentile only apply to the individual stocks. And that's going to allow me to see some very important information. The overall volatility in the case of BBIG is over 200% and the IV rank is 65%. So it's not exactly at its yearly high, but it's pretty close. It's in the upper end range of where it normally sits. And looking down below, I can also see some information about the options that are showing up as results. I've got the five November $7 puts. That expires in 21 days from now, so it does meet my criteria. It's fairly liquid, trading for 98 cents by $1.03. Traded over 158 contracts on Friday. It has a delta of 0.29. So I've got a roughly 71% chance of being successful in this trade or, or this option expiring worthless. And it's got a very high rate of returns, over 16%, which typically means that this thing's got a little bit more risk to it, that there is a possibility of it dropping down to my strike price and beyond. But you can see the five and a half dollar puts also show up as a result, but this time for 12 November. Uh, these are 28 days out. You can see the delta is only 0.16, so the, the probability of being successful on this one is even greater about 84% in this case, which is why my rate of return, or excuse me, return on risk is a little bit lower, only 9.13%. But you can see how useful this is. I can see a very short list of options that I wanna trade. There were only 43 results on this scan. Now, like I said before, you could continue adding additional filters to this thing if you wanted to narrow it down further. Maybe you didn't wanna trade any super high growth companies and you wanted to add PE ratio as a filter. Or maybe it's really important to you that if you get assigned, it's on a company that pays out a dividend. Well, you could add a dividend yield as a filter. Now I will also say it's important to have the column headers right here that you find important, making sure you adjust them to show you valuable information that's important to you. In my case, I've adjusted it to show days until expiration, the current bid and ask, so I actually know what this contract is trading for at that time, as well as volume, delta, return on risk, volatility index, and IV percentile. And remember, you adjust all those with the little gear icon on the right-hand side here, and then you hit customize. And this little window is gonna allow you to add whatever information you find important. You've got a whole lot of options here. 
But if you want to add the ones I use, just take a second, take a peek at it, maybe write them down or, or add them while you're watching. These are just the ones I personally find most useful and the ones I'm using on a daily basis. Now, I told you before, this is just my basic scan, the one I'm using probably most often because I usually like to sit in that 20 to 60 day range when I'm, when I'm selling, uh, especially naked puts. But we could also tweak this if we wanted to. A lot of times I like to trade earnings. Now, I know it's more of like a gambling play because who knows what's going to happen with earnings 50-50, but usually volatility expands to a point that a volatility crush can be pretty profitable for us option sellers. So if we wanted to adjust this scan slightly to accommodate for just weekly options, what we could do is come up here to where it says days until expiration, and we're going to change that from zero days out to, let's just put five days out, or actually we'll do six days out. Now we're still looking to sit in the same delta range between 10 and a delta of 35, so we're going to leave that one be. But we are going to add another filter here, and this one specifically is going to be a study filter. Now what we're looking for in this filter is companies that have earnings within the next, uh, let's say a week, because we wanted to include it on this particular scan, so we'll say six days once again. So we're going to come down to ADX crossover, we'll go down to corporate actions, and we'll click on earnings right here. And we're going to say earnings has an earnings announcement anytime in the next, we'll say six bars, which in this case is six days because we got a daily aggregation over here. And let's go ahead and hit scan, see if anything matches our criteria. Unfortunately, we don't have any results for this particular scan. We could tweak it slightly. Maybe we wanted to drop this implied volatility. We're willing to trade less volatile companies. Maybe we could expand this delta if we were willing to trade maybe higher risk options, maybe all the way up to 50 delta or something. But that's what's so amazing about this scan tab is you can really tweak it as much as you want to incorporate whatever you find useful, whatever you find important, and really narrow down a list of options you'd actually be willing to trade. And what's really cool is once you create this and you save it by clicking on the three little lines up here in the upper right hand corner and saying save scan query, I've already saved it so I'm not going to give it a name and hit save, but we can also open it up as a watch list over here on the side panel. If you look on your left hand side right now, I'm clicking on this options uh, watch list, that's the name of it. If I come up here to personal to see all of my watch lists, you can see one that I've created called CSP or cash secured put scan 20 to 60 days out. If I go ahead and click on that, only to show me those options that meet my criteria. So I could go through this list very, very quickly and hopefully find some options to trade. And any new company that meets my criteria will show up on this list. Anytime an option no longer meets my criteria, it'll fall off this list. Now I know I went through that quick, but hopefully that answers all of your questions about creating a custom scan to find cash secured puts that you wanna sell. If I did miss anything or you guys have any additional questions about Thinkorswim or trading in general, please leave them down below in the comments. Also, if you made it to the end, please leave the video a like. It actually helps out the channel a lot. And as always, let's all try to make some money this week and I'll catch you all in the next video.